morning, church. We are in a new series where it's called White Elephant, the gift you don't want. So this is a sermon number two, and we are going to talk about greed for gratitude. Uh, let, me tell me, let me tell you something that happened last week. Uh, we was in our, in our home, and something was wrong with the electricity. That was like 8 or 9, so a p.m. So I text my landlord, and I say, oh, something is wrong. Uh, so, so he quickly responded me and, and told me, uh, all right, I'm going to send my handyman. So the handyman comes to our home pretty quickly, and he fixes it. So we, everything was okay now. But 25, 30 minutes after the handyman left our home, it happened again. Last 10, 10, with 10 minutes. So Sarai and I, we say, oh, it's a Hispanic culture to have to leave some things for next day. So, <laughs> so we decide to, oh, okay, let's try to fix it tomorrow. And it's night. I know Lander may be gone in, in the bed or some. So at some point at night, how Sarai is more cool than me, uh, she realized realize, uh, heater is not working. So can you imagine how cool that night was? Or how it was under 50 degrees that night? Uh, so next day, handyman comes, he fixes it again. Uh, so for now, it's good. But after that, after he fixed it again, I say, thank you, God, for heater. <laughs> it was good. Are you able to give thanks for anything you have so far? There are some, thing, uh, there are some things we don't think about uh, that we should be thankful for. Something like your bed. Something like water heater. Something like your job, your house, your car. Sometimes we look for more than what we already have because it, it is no longer an out or it's already old. Uh, and then a feeling of greed begins to grow in us when we forgive or uh, to give thanks or show gratitude to God. If we see if someone else has a new car, I need a new car too. My kids are growing, so we need a bigger car. If someone has the new iPhone 15, titanium, and I saw my iPhone and it, oh, my iPhone is 11, so I need a new iPhone too. But consider, be grateful to God for what you have at your disposal. I love to hear preachers in English because that made me to put more attention. So I want to encourage you to put more attention than to me because it is, it is not my language, but uh, that made you to put more attention so you can get the, my ideas I want to share with you. Greet, Luke 12, verse 13 to 15, it's at page 871 in the, in the Bible, Black Bible, and it says, someone in the crew say to him, teacher, tell, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he says to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your war against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. 
and he told to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger, larger ones. And there is, I will store all my grain, all my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. With this parable, Jesus teaches us about uh, us life is not how much possession we could have. It's about uh, how rich we are toward God. If you, are, if you have God in your life, if you look for God first and your possession or your goods, you are rich for God. What greed means? Greed is the inordinate desires or desire to possess wealth, goods, possessions, or objects of as abstract value. This desire is too bad for us as a Christian believers. I want to say riches, goods are not bad. I want to be clear on that. Riches, goods are not bad. Jesus does disapprove of riches. What Jesus really disapproves is to be greedy and look for different goods before you look for God. You and I are full when we put God under our goods or our money. If you are in Christ and your priority is Christ, you are rich toward God. And that is what you and I, we need to do now. Good for, uh, look for God before we look for other stuff. No, one's, no one wants to live like this. So you shouldn't allow greed in your life. You don't permit that feeling start growing in your life, in your heart. Don't want what you don't need. It's too easy to want other things, but we already have something that uh, cover that purpose that other things do. Let me tell you uh, some story. Six years ago, I was working on mines, and I have a good possession of that job. You know, uh, I get an engineer degree in Mexico, and I was working, and I, at that point, six years ago, I had, I had six years working on. So I was starting and in, in got up in the uh, positions. So two years early, it was 2016, 2015. Sari and I, we start talk about serve God full time and come or, or prepare in a ministry in some Christian school or college. Uh, so we decide to move for Piedras Negras, Mexico, where the Bible College is. Uh, two months early, two months, two months uh, before we moved to uh, Piedras Negras. I received an invitation for uh, the factory or the, 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 uh, in my job to get another best place, make more money, uh, work just in the morning, less, uh, to do less things. Uh, and we start talking about greedy. Was on me. I can now. I can uh, buy my own house. Now I can change my car. Now I can uh, make sure 
or, some, or, or kids can have some better education. But Sari and I choose to serve God, and we moved to Bible college. And it was hard. Let me tell you, it was hard. So difficult to take this decision. When I went to or, uh, the man who I want to, to, to say I'm not worth more, he told me, are you okay? You have some problems here with your boss? We can move from other place. Take some vacation time and come back. Are you sure what you're going to do? I'm going to get some studies for Bible to say, God. Are you crazy? Yes. <laughs> I'm crazy. But I think uh, it was so difficult to, to do that step because our future is uncertain. It's not sure. It's just to start living with too much less money that we had in that time. But now, I don't have my own house. My car is not new. But I still feel full. I still feel rich in God. You also can be rich toward God. Put God as your priority. As God may call to you. God called me to preach. God called me to move another place. It's not the same for you, but you know how, what God wants for you. You can be rich for God. Now, gratitude. Gratitude is highly recommended for life of Christians. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul advises Christians to be grateful, to, be, uh, to give thanks to God all the time, in all his letters. And I'm going to read some of, of these uh, passages. 1 Corinthians 15, seven, uh, 57, he's talking about the resurrection of Christ, but also of our sanctification. And we can be, we can be sanctific, uh, sanctific, we can get, we can't get sanctification by ourselves. And Paul said, but thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are victorious in Jesus Christ about the sin. We can, we can live the sin without Jesus Christ in our lives. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgivings, let your request to be made known to God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 say, Root and build up in him and establish it in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in what? In thanksgivings. Colossians 3, 15 to 17 say, I let the, the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ do will in you ritually, teaching and admission one another all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in war or deed, you do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 4, verse 2, continues, continue steadfastly in prayer, to begin wistful in it with thanksgiving. Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 9.11, you will be enriched in every way to be generous, 
in every way, which through, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. First Thessalonians 5, 18, say, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ, in Christ Jesus for you. Gratitude is more than just say thanks. It's to be grateful. It's a style of life as a Christian believers. So we need to, to give thanks and be gratitude in all our circumstances. Philippians 4, 11, 13, page uh, 9, 982 in the, in the Bible, Black Bibles. It says, Know what I am speaking of begin in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Apostle Paul was not a simple people. He was, uh, he was rich. In the, in, the, in, the, in the past time, only people who has money and who live good can have some uh, rabbi. And Apostle Paul say, I am disciple of Gamaliel. So he's not a simple person. And he knows to live in abundance, but also in need. And it is not, depend, his life not depend what situation or what circumstances he was. But in his life, he had abundance and need. So Paul is able to teach us about any circumstances to live, or we are. He uh, advised to us, be grateful in good times. Give thanks for everything I have. We need to give, give thanks and be gratitude and be happy with the things we have. We have a house, be grateful, even when it is rented. You have health, be grateful. You have car, be grateful, even when it's not new. Because you have a good job, give thanks. One of the families is coming with us in our uh, lunch team. They moved from Texas last, last year, in December, and they was trying to look for a new, for, for home. So for, for now, they rent some apartment here, and they start to looking for a buy a house, buy a house, buy a house, and it's too long time to find a house. You know that here in Columbus. Finally, one month ago, uh, they, 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 they found a house. They get a house. And yesterday, we moved that people Size nine to nine. <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff moving. But one of the things I can see that people is grateful is gratitude because they can find a home where they can live. And it's, uh, it's too simple, but it's very important to say, God, thank you so much. What looks impossible, now we can get that. Now we can have home. It's not the home, maybe the house, maybe uh, we want because it's not too much beautiful for us. But it still is home. It still is house. Still we can live there. Still we can invest in a good way or money and not just rent and rent and rent. So you can be grateful for what you have. Can you give? Or show some gratitude to God for what you have. Maybe your car is not new, but you still have car to move from one place to another place. If you have health, give thanks. Now it's not just about physical, material things, but about your spiritual life. 
Now we, you and I, we have hope by Jesus Christ. And not every day we say thank you, Jesus, for that hope. Now we have a new life. Paul says in Ephesians and Galatians, before we, we was dead, but now we are alive. Thank you, Jesus, for the new life. Now I have the Holy Spirit in my life guide me in this world. Now I can please God intentionally. Now we can have freedom in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, ten lepers were cleansed by Jesus. But from the ten people, just one. I mean, ten percent of the hundred percent shows gratitude. I don't know how many people we are here. And I, know, I don't know how many people here comes with a gratitude to Jesus. Be grateful in good times. It's too easy to, to lose the way when we are in good times, when we are in good moments, when everything is okay. We maybe lose uh, to come to the church, to, to serve God, to, to pray to God, because everything is okay. I don't need nothing. Show gratitude when you receive some gifts, when you get some prayers from other ones, people. Because we need to show gratitude in all circumstances, even when everything is okay. We also need to be grateful in bad times. Because when you are in bad moments, Jesus has grace for you, and he's in control of everything. He still loves you. He still takes care of you. He still has some hope for you. Remember, bad moments sometimes keep us more close to God than the good moments. So, when we are in bad moments, we start praying every day. We begin, begin uh, faithful people. And having a, a strong relationship with God when we are in some struggles, when problems in our lives. We are more close. We feel more close to Jesus. We feel... His Holy Spirit to get guidance in our life. So be grateful. Paul was in a prison, and he was sick when he was wrote about gratitude. Every circumstances, good, bad, be gratitude. Be, gra be grateful when you are sick. Be grateful when your income is low. You can this inspiration come to your heart, your main. You, you don't have money to pay everything, but you can be grateful to God. Because your life is not about how much money you have, how much things you can get. It's about if you look for Jesus Christ first. Be grateful even when this year was not as you expected. Maybe you get some loss. Maybe you get a big sick in your life. Maybe you... Have some struggles. Your, the, your car was broken. I don't know. But be grateful. Just be grateful. We will probably never have everything. We will probably never have our own house. We will probably never have a new car. We will probably never have the best job. We will probably, probably never have kids or grandkids. And you wish it a lot. Still, be careful. Because Jesus is still in your heart. Because Jesus is still in control of everything. Maybe you are looking for a baby. Maybe you are looking for a better job. Maybe you are looking for some college that you want to attend. Maybe you are looking for something. But maybe you never will get that stuff. But you still need to be grateful to God in every, in any circumstances. Because we have Jesus in our life. Contemporary Hispanic singer wrote a song 
Khaled Faithful, and a phrase in her song says, if I lost everything, but I have Christ, I know I have everything I need. If I lost everything, but I have Christ, I know I have everything I need. I love mathematics. I love uh, numbers. I love uh, to do some numbers on my main. But these are some examples I want to give you. And maybe it doesn't make sense, but I want to share it with you. Everything less Christ equals nothing. Everything less Christ equals nothing. Nothing plus Christ equals everything. When, when my, my, my boss told me, are you crazy? Did you leave that job? Yes. I'm going to leave everything for Jesus Christ to have everything. So, what can we learn today? Be grateful, and you will be rich toward God. It's not bad to have goods, make more money, get by stuff, but you need to look first for Jesus Christ. You need to look first for God. You need to learn in live in abundance, but you too need to learn to live in it. But keep God as your priority. Maybe you are in good times. Maybe you are in bad times. I don't know. You know. And Jesus knows. But whatever your circumstances is, maybe you are sick. Maybe you are losing your home. Maybe you are in a big credit you can't pay for. But as you ask, make Jesus Christ as your priority. We will probably never have everything, but you can enjoy what God has allowed you to have. Maybe you have everything, but you have something. You can enjoy that. Be grateful for. My family is more than thousand miles away. Two or three weeks ago when Thanksgiving happened, I had my family to meet with them and get a good dinner for Thanksgiving. But I'm here. Some people close to me and say, hey, Fernando, do you want to, to, to spend some time with us in, in, in Thanksgiving? So, for sure. And I, and I went to that family and we spent a very nice time with our family. We enjoy a very delicious food with our family. So I'm thankful for that because it's not my family here, okay, that's fine, but I have more people which God pushed me next to me to enjoy. And I say, thank you, God, for that people. Maybe you are not with your family, but you still have some people here as your family with Jesus Christ. I don't have my, my siblings here, but, but God has surrounded me with Christian family with many more brothers and sisters. I have just three, two sisters and one brother. I don't know how many are here. And other churches. In all Nebraska, I'm meeting a lot of people now. And I'm very grateful with God for that people. Because I can, they, they can show me confidence. They can show me a, a love and in I feel really blessed for God. Gratitude is about seeing the blessing that God has already given you, and this will make you live happily. Maybe you are looking in a different place, your happiness. Look for God. So if you are looking for a change in your life, you can start by being more grateful. It could be a good deal for you this Christmas. God bless you.